I finally harpooned my great white whale or whatever. I have put in over 4,000 miles in my adult life in search of a total eclipse, and I finally saw one. I looked into the heavens, and they winked at me. And I know a, a lot of people don't get it. They don't understand why this matters so damn much that I'm willing to drive thousands of miles to see it. But I'd like to think those people just don't understand what a glorious thing a total eclipse really is. If we lived in a Star Trek universe with interstellar travel and dozens of other intelligent species that we knew of, the way we'd sell Earth as a galactic tourist destination would be our eclipses. They are truly incredible. I said as much on Facebook, and I got a lot of people pushing back on me. They, they said, well, you know, every planet with a moon would have eclipses, and some planets have a lot of moons. And hell, if you're in a spaceship, couldn't you just park your spaceship between a moon and a star whenever you wanted to? But those arguments underestimate the rarity of a terrestrial eclipse. For that, you need a moon that's the same relative size as the parent star. You need an atmosphere to bring out all the glorious colors. And you need life to freak the fuck out when it's suddenly night in the middle of the day. See, long before you get totality, you start edging. The skies start to get darker, but not in a way that you're familiar with from storms or evening. It's a unique darkness that bathes the world in a filter somewhere between sepia and black and white. And then the temperature starts to drop. And quickly, too. It was some 10 degrees in as many minutes. We were in northern Vermont for this one, so we started off in T-shirts and spent totality in sweaters and a jacket. It was too early in the year for crickets, but they'll start chirping. Birds will freak the fuck out. Roosters will crow. And then you'll see sunset creeping up on you from every horizon. And if you're positioned in the right place, and you can bet your asses we were positioned in the right place, you can see the moon's shadow racing along the ground towards you at 1,500 miles an hour. And then the moon just clicks into place. There's no ambiguity there. There's no moment where you're like, is this totality or is that just 99.9%? .9 the moon just clicks in like a fucking Lego and the whole world changes around you. Up until then, I was wearing my special glasses, right, that block out 99% of the light. But now, for the only time in my life, I laid my naked eyes on the sun. I stood there in the shadow of the moon, staring up at this black circle wreathed in thin strands of writhing white fire laid against this purple-black hue that I'd never seen before. And I felt small. And I felt significant. And I felt the glorious burden of consciousness, of being one of those rare bits of matter that gets to comprehend beauty. And I feel a rush of communal reverence as I share this profound moment with a hundred random strangers in this field and a hundred more in the next field and thousands and millions more stretching all the way back to Mexico. And I feel this rush of ancestral reverence as innate terror and wonderment suddenly linked me to the millions and billions of past witnesses stretching all the way back to the Miocene. And because the phrase, fuck those fucking Christians, is never that far from my mind, as I stood there drinking in this experience that I traveled so far to have, I couldn't help but think to myself, fuck those fucking Christians. How dare they try to pretend that they have a monopoly on awe. Here I am contemplating the astronomical lottery that we won to have such a perfect combination of lunar satellite and parent star, trying to look through the eyes of our pre-sapien forebears, marveling at the chain of brilliant deductions that allow us to predict these motherfuckers to begin with. And where are they? Where are the Christians, these masters of awe? They're hiding from the fucking sun. They're dreading the human sacrifices that the eclipse is going to kick off as it ushers in the goddamn end times. They're putting up snarky Facebook posts about how you'll be pretty sorry when they get raptured later today and you don't. I mean, for Christians, Yahweh made the sun, he made the moon. It only made sense for him to make them the same apparent size. In that case, eclipses are no more remarkable than a willow tree or a snowflake, right? They're simply a god making the logical choice when it comes to relative moon sizes. But they're also, for some fucking reason, imbued with ominous portent. What's God trying to say with this eclipse? What dreadful message do the skies hold for us? So not only are they looking at it as a relatively unexceptional occurrence, but they're also poisoning that experience with nonsensical panic. Add to that the fact that even at its best, the natural world could never live up to the shit that they're making up in their heads. 
right? I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a person more impressed with a total eclipse of the sun than myself. But even I have to admit it would pale in comparison to a single glimpse of an eternal paradise bathed in the glory of the universe's fucking creator. Right. In their books, God made the sun stand still just to help out with a military campaign. If you ask the Catholics, he made the sun dance around in a way that only a few thousand Portuguese people could see barely a century ago. So cool as it may be, eclipses probably don't even make the top five of shit God does with his son. So here I am marveling at the most incredible sight I've ever seen, free from the taint of irrational fear, teleological passivity, and magical comparisons. And I can fully experience awe without even having to make shit up to be in awe of. 